Testify that Muhammad is, is his last prophet and messenger. May all the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. We were created to this universe to worship Allah. Only to worship Allah. Allah told us in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِعْبُدُ Most certainly, I'm not created jinn and bihu, but to worship me. So we were created only to worship Allah. Everything that we do is something subsidiary to help us to this main mission beyond which we were created to this universe. So we may need to eat, we need to, to, to rest, we need to, need to marry, we may have a job. All these things are supposed to be some assistant factors to help us to the main mission during which we will create this universe, which is only to worship Allah. And we believe that Allah is the controller of this universe. Sometimes, we may meet something that we do not like. During the last few days, I met some of our friends. Some of them is sad because he lost his baby son. The other was in some kind of distress because he lost his sister, who was sick for a long time. Some others met some kind of financial problems. When Allah created this universe, He told us that we're going to suffer here. When you look for a valuable thing, you are supposed to prepare a good price. For trivial things, you may pay a real, a couple of reals, ten reals. But for precious jewels, for example, you pay thousands and thousands. You may pay millions. If this kind of goods that you are going to buy is prepared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you are entitled to pay your life. Allah told us in the Quran that. In Allah Isn't that correct? This is the Quran. Ishtara and then women um fusahum their own lives. One well and their own wealth, their own money, their their own belongings. Be under the Mujam. Why? Because they're supposed to be working for something that's very valuable. 
very precious. Something and you need to compare to this world incomparable to the world that you're living in. So when you meet some kind of suffering in this world, just remember that you are paying the price of something that is very dear. Something that is prepared by Allah. If you are invited to a banquet by a VIP, a dignitary, you expect that you are going to have some kind of luxurious food. You may fast for some time so as to be able to have as much as you can of that, of this uh, uh, fancy food. But then you are told that you are going to go to Jannah that is prepared by Allah. There is none like that. Allah said, Laysa kamithlihi shayin. Never can you imagine anything or anybody that may ever be compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never. And Allah is preparing that Jannah for you. This paradise, this heaven, whatever you're going to call it, we're going to Jannah. Okay? You are preparing for that day when you meet Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you're going to be rewarded with that. It deserves. It deserves to face this, this kind of trouble that you may face. To cross these obstacles that you may pass through. To endure this kind of sadness that may meet you because of one reason or the other. Why? Because you are looking for what is much more superior, much more sublime, much, much more precious, much more expensive. Something that is beyond imagination. When we mention the beauty of Jannah, when you mention, mention the fruits in Jannah, when you, just the names, just to make the idea clear. But the food of Jannah cannot be compared to with the food of this world. The fruits of Jannah can never be compared to the fruits of this world. But just to make the idea feasible, understandable, easy for you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned these things. But these things can never be compared to what they are going to find, inshallah, there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسُ No one ever can know مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ What is hidden for you over there? Jannah is unseen. And this is what we call in Arabic, Al-Ghayb. Al-Ghayb can be translated into the unseen. Allah subhanahu wa described the, 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 the believers as الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ that they be those who believe in the unseen. Al Jannah is from the unseen. We haven't seen. We know that it's above, above heavens, and we know that, that it's very high, and we know that the top of it is the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, over the third is, yeah, but we haven't seen it. It is something we haven't seen. It. So, when you, you meet some troubles in this world over here, just remember that. There is what we can call, what we can call a contract. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alaykum sir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bought this, this whole body of yours. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is supposed to control all your belongings. Because he told us in the Quran, وَأَنْفِقُوا أَسْبَنْ Lay off. Make some kind of charity. مِمَّا جَعَلَكُمْ مُسْتَخْلَفِينَ فِيهِ You are authorized. To, to deal with this money in this world. The money is from Allah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not pave the road for you to, to gain this money, this these sums of money, you are not going to be able to get it. It's not your own personal gain. You work it, you exerted your efforts, but it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To get it in a halal way. So as to be blessed. So as to bless your family, are going to deal with this, to be sur to survive with this money. But originally the money is from a master. All the blessings and the good things that you are living in in this world is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
today we started our journey at 8 o'clock together with Dr. Hadi over here and we were supposed to arrive here at 11, 11 15. Just a very small thing. The car got hot. We were forced to stop for some time to check the, 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 the circle of, of water, to check our car before we start our journey again and we came late. Because it is preordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're going to arrive here late. So it's not because of your own efforts, it is in the hands of the controller of this universe. Means he plans everything to, to the best for you, even if you cannot see it at the right time. You know what will going to happen if you're going to stop because of that this seat. You may meet some bigger problem and you, you may you may not be able to come at all. You may meet an accident and you, you will never come here or there. So when you submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to choose the best for you, even if you, if you don't like it at, at the time. You will discover later that what happened to you here prevented you from some big, bigger harm that may have taken place. And if you accept that, you're going to be double, double rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah for forgiveness and be sure that He's going to grant you what you ask Him. The best names, as the Prophet ﷺ told us, is well, the best among the names is Abdullah and Abdurrahman. Abdullah, because Allah is a unique name for Allah. No one ever in history ever dared to take that name. Allah. Allah is a unique word in language. It has no singular, no plural, no feminine, uh, uh, no masculine, of, of whatever. It's one of a kind for, for one who has nobody ever that can be compared to him. When they say, Ahad, it means that he's the only one. Ahad does not mean one. Ahad means the only one. And when you say, Laysa lahu wa lam yakul lahu kufwa nahad, there is nothing ever that can be compared to him, that can be equal to him, that can be of any kind similar to him. When we say, Laysa kamithli shay, there is nothing ever that can be compared to Allah. Remember that all the time. Remember that you are a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are a slave servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a servant or a slave is supposed to follow the orders, the commandments of the teachings of his master. If you work for an institute, you sign a contract. You're supposed to stick to the rules, stick to the, 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 the items in the contract, because upon that, we have hired you. You are occupying that position because of one, two, three, four, five. 
So when you are a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should stick to this, the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should remember all the time. And you remember that everything, every good thing you are in is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything, every good thing that you are in is because you are obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you are going to remember Allah all the time, you will never lose. You will never feel distressed, depressed. You will overcome all your sadnesses, all your pains, all your hurdles, all the obstacles that may face you. Are you going to be self-confident? You will have this self-esteem. If you work for a prince, you say, I'm working for a prince. And he's a slave servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he can't do nothing to himself if he's going to feel sick. You are a slave, you are working under the, the supervision of Allah, under the commandments of Allah, under the teachings of Allah through his Prophet So you should remember Allah all the time. All the time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed the Prophet most of you know. And like a He feels depressed. He feels sad. And the Prophet was a mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set him down as a mercy to all the worlds. Sometimes we say a mercy it's not only a mercy to humanity. Allah told us in the Quran, Wama Sana who have not sent you but Illa Rahmatan as a mercy. Lil Alameen. Al Alameen is a plural uh, noun for Al Alam. So, Al -alam, all the worlds, the world of people, the world of jinn who listen to him and believe in him, the world of animals, and remember the camel that were calmed down and their tears came to, to the eyes of the camel when the Prophet ordered his owner to deal justly with him. The bird that were flying over the, the, the army. Because they took out its nest, so the animal world, the, even the mountains. On his way, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, back from Tabuk, when they were very near to, to Al Madina, he said, This is Uhud, you know, of course, Uhud, that mountain, Jabalun. It's a mountain. Yuhibbuna loves the believers. Uhud loves the believers. And the believers love, love Uhud. So it was all the worlds, the world of people, the world of jinn, the world of animals, the world of birds, even the world of, of mountains. Would you believe that? They do not? No. So when you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time, Allah will enable you to overcome each and every problem that may face you. وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرِ we must certainly know Allah is addressing His Prophet وسلم, بِمَا يَقُولُونَ They were not believing in Him and they were mocking Him And He is the mother for all humanity He is the best human ever And even with this high rank of His these people were laughing at Him And of course as a human you will feel, you know I'm coming to the best of you, and you are offending me. This is not supposed to be how, how, how this grace to, to deal with me this way. You're supposed to be grateful. So follow me because I'm going to save you from hell, hell fire. This kind of reaction is not supposed to be, it's not fair. I need the best for you, and you are offending me. You feel sad, feel depressed. You are not contented with this and not pleased with their behavior. بما يقول what, what, what they say to you. فسبح بحمد ربك. سبح بحمد ربك is very easy. To say سبحانك اللهم وبحمد. وكم من الساجدين. من الساجدين you prostrate to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Means go to prayer. When he feels depressed, this is this is the therapy. This is the best thing to deal with it. This is the best, the best way to get, to get rid of it. Just make wudu and pray to Rakat. Wholeheartedly. Concentrating on, on, on your prayer. 
just to repeat everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's the only one able to, to remove it. And you will feel that. After you make that to and bring peace to work out, you will feel that all these mountains of sadness are removed from your own children. Why? Because you resorted to the right one who can heal you from this problem. Go to Allah directly. We don't have any intermediators. We don't go to pastors. We don't go to synagogues. Or to, no. To rabbis. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet sallallahu If my own slave servants asked you, O oh Muhammad sallallahu about me, فإني, I'm very near to them. I'm very close to them. I'm very close to them. Allah did not order the Prophet وسلم, to tell the believers to go to him to intercede between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فإني means that they are supposed to come to me directly. There's no barriers between you and your own prayer, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just go to him. And remembering that Allah is the easiest act of worship ever. We call it in Arabic, dhikr. When you say, subhanallah wa bihamdi, the easiest thing ever, subhanallah wa bihamdi, 100 times a day. Can you imagine that no one ever on the face of the earth may come on the day of judgment with some kind of reward better than you, unless he remembered more than that. But it's very easy. Subhanallah wa Just you remember them. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah wa Just one more time. You're going to take two, two minutes, three minutes, and you'll find mountains of rewards on the day of judgment. You'll meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over there. Unless somebody is going to mention them, 150, 200. So the more you, you, you make that act of dhikr, the more you'll be rewarded. It's a matter of three minutes. Why don't you make just three minutes in the morning and three minutes in the afternoon to say, SubhanAllah, come on. 100 in the morning, 100 in the afternoon. And expect the best from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, are called al-baqiyat salihat. Instead of just remembering a song or some kind of music or just mentioning something about these trivial people, just whenever you have time, when you're not engaged in work, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. How much will it cost? Nothing. You'll feel some kind of relief over here. We're going to say it wholeheartedly. It's not a matter of just saying it with your own. Just remember that. When you say, SubhanAllah, because that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can never, can, any bad thing can never be attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Thank Allah for every, and, and remember, thousands of blessings that millions. Suppose that one of us, you're going to catch cold. Just catch cold. Temperature is going to get up to 40. Then we're going to be, be able to eat anything. Then we're going to be able to breathe. Then we're going to be able to go to work. Then we're going to be able to eat. Then we're going to sleep. Just because of some airstream. This flu or this common cold. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevented this from happening to you. It deserves to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people may meet some kind of accident anywhere that may prevent them from going to work, from reporting to anything, from enjoying their own life. And you are, alhamdulillah, safe and sound. Say, alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided you to the truth. Millions of people are going astray around the world. I told you a thousand, a thousand times, you should be very proud of being a Muslim. Be very proud, don't be shy. You have chosen the right path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People are worshipping cows, worshipping mountains, worshipping 
grubbers, worshipping animals, and now worshipping the one who is destroying this whole, the creator of this, all, all that what around you, all that you can see, all that you cannot see, the seen and the unseen, are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you are a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have discovered that while you are here, and you have been ordered for that, be 100 sure of this, you should be proud of that. So remember Allah all the time, and if you have some, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so if you are depressed, Subhanallah wa hamdi, and pray. Allah said that, said so. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكْ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ أَنْ وَشِبَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Till the end of your life. To the last minute of your life. Just to worship Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the blessings are going to start after you, you depart. After you finish this life over here. The moment that you are going to, to die, you're going to see your place in Jannah. Jan. This kind of bliss, of happiness, of enjoyment, of endless happiness, we're going to start from the moment that this soul is going to depart from this life. So work for it. Work for it. Prepare for it. Prepare for it. Don't get bored. Because we have a limited period of time. It's very limited. The finite, when it's going to be compared to the infinite, there means zero. Suppose that you are going to live for a thousand years here, which is not going to happen. If you're going to compare this to in this happening, so then it's going to get, and then it's going to give you a zero. So, if you feel bored, just try to activate yourself. <coughs> try to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to remember that Jannah deserves, because it is prepared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you. Try to remember that you've sold yourself and you, you all, all your belongings to Allah for that Jannah that I'm going to enter, inshallah, after you leave this life. And remember Allah all the time. If you have somebody who's sick, the Prophet told us some kind of treatment. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Dawu Mardakum bis Sadaq. Depression, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, and pray. Somebody is sick, Yusuf, Yusuf, Qawla Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our Prophet told us, Tadawu Ibadallah. He ordered us to, 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 to go to hospitals, to go to doctors, to uh, look for treatment for all diseases. But this kind of charity, which you offer, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, you can, your son, your brother, your father, your mother, your wife, whatever, from that close circle of yours, just look for a needy person. Somebody who's, who's in need of that help and pay something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember that, you are paying that for the satisfaction of Allah, for the pleasure of Allah, and you will find some terrific results for that sick that you are going to have. So, even if it's something small, when you say charity, some people think that they're supposed to pay a lot of money, which is not correct. That charity Allah may accept half of a date. Half of a date. You know that date? Half of it may Allah accept it if it is halal. If it is halal. And Allah SWT is going to invest that for you. You may find it in the Dark Jannah as a mount. Well, he accepted his right hand, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he's going to invest it as you bring up your, your young horses, and you'll find it in the day when you are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as a mountain. When you see your own book in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and say, oh, th this is the date, the halal date that you give, give to somebody who was in a bad need for it, or very hungry was in a bad need of that. 
and you did it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa of the mercy that is in the heart of the believers, you'll be rewarded for that. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the utmost reward for the least that you're gonna do. Don't lose that chance. Remember Allah all the time. Remember that you are here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are for a period of time. Don't lose interest. Try to concentrate all the time. وَعَبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Worship Allah, your own Lord, till the last man of your mind. اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا التي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر وننصرنا ولا تنصر علينا وأعنا ولا تعن علينا واهدنا ويسر الهدى لنا اللهم اجعلنا من الذين إذا أعطيتهم شكروا وإذا منعتهم صبروا وإذا أحسنوا استبشروا وإذا أساءوا استغفروا وإذا استنفرتهم نفروا وإذا جاهدوا فيك انتصروا يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك أن تصلح أحوال المسلمين أجمعين اللهم أصلح أحوال المسلمين أجمعين اللهم أصلح أحوال المسلمين أجمعين اللهم أطعم جائعهم واكسع عاليهم وأوم شردهم واحمل حافيهم اللهم أمن خائفهم اللهم صلهم على عدوك وعدوهم اللهم اقهر ظالميهم اللهم مكن هذه الأمة يا رب العالمين أمر رشد يعز فيه أهل طاعتك ويهدى فيه أهل معصيتك ويؤمر فيه بالمعروف منها في عن المنكر وتقال فيه كلمة الحق لا يخشى قيل وفي الله لو متلاء سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين